let's now talk about the new features in R2. And let me just make sure I, I set this up correctly. These are the new features after 2008 and in R2. It's not the differences between 2005 and R2, in other words, right? Uh, we kind of spent already two videos talking about those. Now, let me just say this about R2 to kind of get us started. R2 is probably a little bit more than R2. <laughs> um, I know that probably makes no sense. Uh, so like usually with a progression of software, we're often used to seeing like, um, and I'll use the Windows platform for a little bit. So like we're seeing you know, Windows 95, Windows 98, uh, Windows Millennium, um, Windows, and I'm just going to use the major uh, commercial business and non-business versions here so in windows 7 i left off here this is what we're kind of used to seeing and if you'll kind of remember some of you will some of you won't but the difference between 98 and windows me uh, was really almost nothing i mean it was just most basically a visual upgrade there were some minor new features but it was not enough to really warrant a completely new version the only reason that we got a new version hey the year 2000 is here gotta have new software right <laughs> that was really what it came down to now with sql server 2008 r2 this is a bigger change than just going from like Windows 98 to Windows ME. This is actually a fairly significant change. And so what I mean by Windows R2 or SQL Server 2008 R2 is not just an excuse to charge money for the same old product is that there are really some significant improvements in R2 and significant new things in R2. You know, a lot of times with R2 versions of Microsoft software which to be fair, is a rarely, uh, relatively new phenomenon. A lot of times, these are just improvements, enhancements, performance, uh, new drivers, updated this. Not so here with R2. Okay, so R2 has new features that we like as well. Now, to be finally focused, we're here to talk about 2008 reporting services and 2008 R2 reporting services. So that's where our focus has to be for this video. And in 2008 R2 reporting services, there are only minor changes. Okay. However, R2 as a whole product, covering the entire SQL Server database engine, analysis services, reporting services, integrations. As a whole product, it's not just a facelift to SQL Server 2008. Okay? There are new features and such. Okay? So, like I say, in reporting services R2, we've got not that many new features, but it's certainly a more usable product than 2008 is. Uh, most of the changes are going to revolve around how you interface with the product. Okay, so we're going from a product in SQL Server 2008 that uses Visual Studio 2008 to a product in Visual Studio 2010 with SQL 2008 R2. So that's going to be a fairly significant difference right there. There are many changes, many differences in Visual Studio 2010 and you know that's going to cover a large part of the usability of working with R2. Okay. Uh, so some of the new features that I chose to focus on were the ones that I liked the most. This is by no means meant to be a, an all-encompassing list, but my favorite new features, number one, it's definitely my number one, it's my favorite one, is the report part gallery. And what this allows us to do is instead of now publishing a report as an item, now you can republish just a report part. Okay, so now you can have a specific data region and you can publish that one data region, not the whole report, but just that one data region in the report part gallery. And now you can use that in other tools or you can use it in other reports. Other users in your organization can use that in their own reports. You have now published your own data region. Okay, so it's, it's like report publishing by doing report parts. You're not having to publish an entire report. Okay? And now 
when you're working with the report builder you can also publish to the report part gallery which there is a new version of report builder a report builder 3.0 and I will tell you that it is very slick report builder 3.0 it is it is a very cool tool to work with you will really dig it and you can use the report part gallery and you can just kind of drag and drop and it's very cool. It's a, a very slick uh, tool. So the, uh, definitely my favorite part is the report part gallery. And then second place would be the report builder. Uh, like I said, this is integrating with Visual Studio 2010. There are a couple of 2010 based products. I'm surprised that we didn't get SQL Server 2010. You know, we had Exchange 2010. Visual Studio 2010, SharePoint 2010, Office 2010, but we didn't get SQL Server 2010. That was, um, I don't know, I guess I was surprised a little bit by that. Uh, so we get R2, right? So uh, anyway, with Visual Studio 2010 does come a new AJAX-based report control. So if you are an ASP.NET developer, uh, you're really going to get a lot of use out of the AJAX uh, report control. You know, people love to have AJAX-based calendaring controls, AJAX-based pages. We don't have to refresh the whole page. We don't get that annoying ASP.NET pop-up that says you know, to perform the following operation. You have to resend your request. Much finer, much more usable there. Uh, like I said uh, earlier, this there is the new SharePoint 2010. One of the nice and nice features here with tie-in between reporting services and SharePoint is that you can repay, re create your report parts and then you can use them in SharePoint 2010. So you just publish them to the gallery and now you can use them in 2010 SharePoint. Uh, another thing, this is really more for the administrators and report administrators, is you are able to do data set caching in a very granular way now. We can specify, okay, here's my data set, and I want to have this data set cached once every day. So at midnight, I want to cache this data set. You know what caching means? Caching means you run your query and you load the results in memory. And then the next time somebody comes in and wants to read that set of data, they don't have to run the query again. They don't have to go hit an already busy database. They can just retrieve it from memory, and it's faster, less resources on the, the database server. So now you can cache your data set independent of a report. There are many times where we have to reuse data sets across reports for drop downs. Those are very common ways for order information that just needs to be viewed different ways on different reports. Now we can cache that information so that the query only has to run one time and it's going to result in faster reports and less resources used on the database server. Um, I like the new visualizations in reporting services. If you've ever dealt with the Excel 2007 or Excel 2010 visualizations that are so easy to add to your worksheets, uh, the stop signs, the go, the the um, all the colorization tools, we now have a lot of those brought back and brought into reporting services. And we have a new one as well called Spark Lines. And Spark Lines, you can see here, they are great for showing a trend. A Spark Line fits within a single line and shows a trend of that line. So we could see over the one year period for women's apparel that it's gone from a low to a high. And so I love that ability to put those Spark Lines in a small report like that. Uh, let's see, I just have to finally say that as I'm doing this, it is February 2010, and R2 has not actually been released yet. It won't be released for several months, so it's not considered final yet, even though it is what we call feature complete. So things like spark lines are supposed to be in the final product. However, because it hasn't been released yet, you know... Some of the things that I mentioned may not end up being in there. 
However, what should not happen is that major new features should not be added after this. That's what feature complete means, that these are all the features that will be in it. Now we're just basically testing it for usability and for bugs. So I will say everything else that we talk about in this course should be the same in R2. You should not expect to have to watch this course again for SQL Server 2008 R2. Okay. There are going to be new things in Visual Studio 2010 and in um, the Report Builder 3.0, but the basic premise of how things work is going to be the exact same thing. Okay. At some point, I may come up with a What's New in R2 Reporting Services course. You might check the website for that, uh, but you know, they, it's just not so drastically different that you'd need to take an entire course again. You might just want to kind of have like a little, hey, hey, what's new type course, right? Uh, okay, so I tell you what, let's go ahead and stop here. Let's come back and talk about the databases and the data sources that we're going to talk about in this course.